Okay, let's get started from where we left. In the previous video, we learned about the usage of PowerShell, what get is, set is, formatting is, start a service is, etc. That falls under the category of verb hyphen noun. We also learned that there is a command with the name get hyphen verb where you can enumerate the list of verbs that PowerShell would accept. Now I have launched PowerShell on my computer. There are several ways in which you can launch PowerShell. I usually prefer going through this box and typing PowerShell, hit enter, and it launches PowerShell pretty quickly, the fastest way of opening it. There are other administrators who prefer going through the start box and then going through the PowerShell like this. It all depends about your comfort level with the operating system, but I always prefer Windows R and then type PowerShell, hit enter. That's quick for me. Now I'll exit from here and just run this command called get iPhone verb on the PowerShell prompt. Hit enter and it shows me quite a lot of these verbs that PowerShell will accept. This add, clear, close, copy, etc. The ones that we demonstrated in the previous video should also be there, like get or restart. It's right here, restart hyphen computer. So we always know that this verb is followed by a noun. We can give it a shot. If you don't know what it follows with, we can just say restart hyphen and then tab. You will notice that the nouns are automatically populated every time I hit the tab on the keyboard. So it circles around the nouns that are available in the PowerShell library. Depending on the usage, you may pick and choose one of them. But with experience, you will always memorize and remember the verbs and nouns and their combinations. So let's say you want to restart restart a computer. So just say restart iPhone com and tab. The auto completion feature is really helpful. So you do not have to type a lot and that reduces the possibility of typographical errors as well. Now you have a combination of verb and a noun. Now let's say I don't know what to type after that. So Microsoft PowerShell has a wonderful help utility built in it and if you're looking for examples you can just type hyphen examples after the commandlet. Hit enter and it will give you the entire documentation about how restart hyphen computer can be used and what is the purpose of it. As you notice, there are also examples inside here. It says example one, we'll restart the local computer. So if I run restart hyphen computer without any syntax, it will just restart my laptop. Whereas if you want to restart the computers in an array, that's what we use with a hyphen computer name syntax followed by the server names in double quotes with a comma separated values. Now this goes in an array. Similarly, there are example three, example four, five, etc. Depending on what you may want to use, you would like to first look at the examples, see how it can be used and different ways in which it can be interpreted. It's always a good idea to look at the help documentation. So if you don't know how to use a particular commandlet, help with the example syntax is what I would recommend. At this time, I would do a control C, clear the screen and go back to where we started from. Now we did get hyphen verb to get the list of verbs. Let's look at another example. Oh, there's a start option. There's a stop option as well. On um, deny, probably we are looking at permissions there, disabling a particular service, mounting a volume, backing up your disk. So there are numerous options to manage your machines. The list of verbs are available here. The combination of syntaxes needs to be figured out by using a hyphen and then tab completing and circling around the options available. And then you do a hyphen example syntax with the help option to see how it can be used. It's more like a manual file in Linux or a help file in Windows. Remember that these concepts will remain the same regardless of where you're picking up the PowerShell commands from. It could be your local Windows PowerShell commandlets or could be cloud-based PowerShell commandlets. These fundamentals always remain the same and that's why PowerShell is not a scripting language. PowerShell is a framework that can be modified, manipulated, make your own modules, just customize your own programming platform.
In the upcoming videos, we'll learn about modules in PowerShell.